Not someone you don't treat them bad. You don't. You just don't. Hey, good morning, y'all. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house. This is part two of our conversation uh, regarding dysfunctional families. I want to know what kind of family you grew up in. Uh, would you even admit it if you did grow up in a dysfunctional family? Or do you think, oh, you know, that's just how black people do. Black people do crazy then. And they do it very well. <laughs> um, white folk do crazy too now, though. It ain't just relegated to us. I don't want you to get the wrong idea or the wrong impression. They really do crazy. Real good. Uh, they do extreme violence very well. I've never seen a group of people of as well, let's just go. On. Uh parents in dysfunctional uh families do a lot of damage. And since I don't know if the two minute mark has passed and it hasn't, then I can't really get too much into really what I want to say. I usually like to wait until we've gone the two minute mark before I get at this conversation because uh of the algorithms and because of how YouTube uh, decides to um, play with people's uh, learning ability. Um, certain words they don't think you should say and certain things they don't want to cross the waves as if um, you're going to do something that's totally crazy. So it's certain words and things like that that they have a problem with that as a content creator you have to have the ability to well, wait it out or be creative in your conversation. So, um, here we go. Parents in dysfunctional families often lack trust in their children and tend to invade their privacy. While there are times when parents need to know what's going on with their children so they can respond appropriately, Parents in a dysfunctional family utilize honest communication rather than room raids and harsh interrogations. Children in dysfunctional families often aren't given the opportunity to even be themselves. They may be discouraged from making their own decisions, developing preferences that are different from their parents, or having friends their parents disapprove of. Uh, they're often expected to imitate their parents rather than develop unique personalities. And I think that is one of the most saddest parts of a dysfunctional family. And you see it a lot with men when they have their first sons and they want to make them basketball players because they play basketball or um, whatever it is that they do. And then they, they go on this rampant um, abuse campaign, basically. They don't see it that way. They said, I got me a little me. I got a little me. But you don't. You just had a male son that, that you were allowed to come through you. That God allowed you to borrow. <laughs> really. The universe allowed you this gift. Not for you to make it dysfunctional and crazy. And to put your idiosyncrasies on it and on him or her. But to allow them blo to blossom like any other flower. With nourishment and with water and love. Constant criticism also runs rampant in a dysfunctional family. Sometimes the criticism is blatant with parents chastising everything the child does or says. Other times parents take a more subtle approach by using sarcasm, insults, and teasing in a sneaky attempt to say something very negative about uh, making themselves uh, uh, without making themselves seem as cruel as they are. Oh, that's a lot. A lot. And it's a lot for a kid to deal with. There are five common roles in a dysfunctional family. The enabler or the caretaker. This individual attempts to keep the family going despite the presence of addiction and or other dysfunctions in the family. The enabler or caretaker protects troubled family members from others and the consequences of their behavior. 
the scapegoat or the troublemaker. This family member tends to be a rule breaker, both in society and within the family unit. The scapegoat or troublemaker may become sick or weak or angry and rebellious. This individual's well-being is often sacrificed to maintain the family structure. The lost child or the quiet one. This person is seemingly calm and collected and makes a conscious effort to avoid causing trouble. The lost child spends the majority of his time alone avoiding the family and its dysfunctional ways. This individual tends to struggle with social skills more so than other members of the family, likely because, um, oh, wow, and likely because they rarely practice interacting with others. Then you got the mascot in the family. That's the individual. This individual alleviates tension in the family by utilizing humor and mischief in everyday life. The mascot is a comedian in the family, the fun one, but the one that's always on a mission to lighten the mood. Family members in this role tend to suffer when things slow down. And you can see them. These are a lot of these are your comedians. You can see them. They've taken the 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 um. Uh, uh, dysfunction of their family. I always say this, and there's no disrespect. When I really think about that, I think about people like Richard Pryor. I think about um, uh, Corey Holcomb, who is so dysfunctional, who is a straight walking <laughs> poster board for family dysfunction, like we all are. Um, I think the difference is Corey discusses he is. He talks about everybody else's now too, though. But he discusses his family uh, dysfunction. And for that, I have to commend him. Because that's very difficult to do. The hero. This person has an intense desire to succeed in life. Which can lead to suffering from stress-related illnesses. The hero is typically a pro at covering up dysfunction within the family. And making their parents look normal. That's me. That's my older brother. Uh, a lot of that is me. Ugh. When a child is living in a dysfunctional family, he or she may experience immediate effects, including social isolation or loneliness, developmental or of behavioral disorders, being extremely self-critical, low self-esteem, development of mental health issues such as anxiety or depression, Difficult expressing their thoughts and their feelings. When you live in a dysfunctional family, your brain becomes wired to respond to the stressors of the, in unhealthy ways. But you have the ability to make a permanent change. Trust me, as an adult. So, well, then you might say, well, what the hell is it like to grow up in a healthy family then? <laughs> you know, because it seems like everybody's family is, is, is crazy. Well, if you can understand, again, the, the, the dynamics of a dysfunctional family, seeing of a, a operating healthy family, seeing that emotion in life, and, or are you creating it in your own life, in your own being, will help you to understand um, the dynamics of dysfunction and your ability to move on will be lessened. I mean, will be, you know, will be greater. You you, you will do it. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but you can get there. Little steps, baby steps. If you focus on the dysfunction quotes that you see on the internet, the media from the entertainment industry, even in great literature, you might get the impression that there is no such thing as a healthy, functional family life. But that's a lie. However, some families function very well, providing every member with what they need to live in a peaceful, productive life. So what does a family, healthy family look like? You want to know what a healthy family looks like? People communicate freely and openly, but compassionately as well. Everyone's basic physical and emotional needs are met. 
Uh-huh. Everybody's basic, physical, and more. You don't just go cater to one. Family members listen to one another and appreciate differing opinions. You know, not my baby did it. My baby said it's okay. Don't do that to my baby. And y'all know y'all did it. Come on over here, uh, Michael. Let me hold you. You come on over here. Come on, come on. And you protect them from the rest of the family members. Conflicts are resolved directly, and family members don't hold grudges. Parents show unconditional love for each child, and when they don't ap approve of specific behaviors, they still show unconditional love. For the child. Family members work together. To reach mutual goals. And they achieve goals as a family. Each family member. Is encouraged to develop preferences. Interests and a unique personality. To overcome. A childhood marred. By being in a dysfunctional environment. You must start by healing. Those old internal wounds. Talking with the therapist allows you to express your feelings about what happened in a safe environment that's entirely focused on helping you become mentally healthy, healthier. You can learn and practice the skills no one taught you when you were a child. Now, these might include communication skills, independence, empathetic listening, and skills that make it possible for you to handle your problems directly. You can learn to be more comfortable in your own skin. With your own mind, your body, and your emotions. And with your own choices. You can grow more self-confident, self-accepting, and more self-assured. You can also learn to feel more trust and safety in your home environment. You might ask, yeah, but how can I learn all these things at my age? The way you learn is to read some self-help books. Write in your journal. But most helpful of all, you can talk to someone who has been trained to teach people how to overcome destructive influence of a dysfunctional family. That's not something that, you know, you just push off lightly um, because your whole personality has been altered by the way these people have uh, altered your personality with their behaviors. Um, so... The thing that you need to understand is that there are there is help if you want to overcome your damage from growing up in a dysfunctional family. So we know what it's like to grow up in a dysfunctional family. And we've also learned what it looks like and to understand the dynamic of a healthy family. And that's what we all should aspire to. Every last one of us should want to be healthy. And it's going to help us think straighter for the psychological warfare that has been leashed upon us and the chemical. So with that being said, family, um, honor yourself today. Honor your children. Honor your loved ones. Uh, and stay safe from the um, Omarion. Y'all give me y'all comments. Please tell me what y'all think about these comments. And if you grew up in a dysfunctional family, I want to know what that looks like. What did it look like for you? What was your what is your experience? What have you had to work to overcome being brought up in a crazy family? You have thought about people who grew up in a family where everybody fucking steals. Everybody in the house steals. Growing up in a house like that has got to be it's insane. Right? But there are some of us who grew up in, in, in home, homes like that. And we were learned, taught how to steal in homes like that. Oh, I wasn't. But I'm saying there are some families who their parents taught them how to steal. See them all the time. The mama taking them to stores and the internet. On the internet you see them. They have a ring. One kid looking out this way. One kid looking. See, that's dysfunction, people. That ain't we getting over on the system. Yeah, you're getting over on the system, but that's the small part of it. The other part about it is, as an adult, as a leader, 
you are ruining your kids' mind and teaching them so severe dysfunctional attributes that it's going to be hard for them to break them as an adult. So I want to know what y'all think. Leave your comments below. And if you like what you hear, y'all, please subscribe and please share to the channel. Um, uh, uh, please donate to the channel. And we'll see you in the next video.